Hello, Hawkeye125646 here. Today, on questions for Catholics. I'm going to be going into the different uh, writings of all the fathers. And in this one, it's going to be about Justin Martyr. In which, those, again, this is under the premise that those who are a student of history cease to protest against the Catholic Church and become Catholic. Uh, these, the early church fathers, was, as I'm reading through books like this, I'm going to be reading about for about 15-20 minutes and it's going to basically, I'm going to be reading chapter after chapter and you will notice wholeheartedly that Catholic Church has always been, is, and always will be. Okay. Uh, and when I'm doing these, doing the uh, readings on these books from Justin Martyr, Thomas Aquinas, uh, Tertullian, Polycarp, uh, what's going to happen is underneath there's going to be quotations in regards to the author's notes. And the way it's going to work is when I when I go to a time, like for instance, uh, whenever there I see a number one on the page, I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to read what the author's notes are all about. Okay, so the first apology of Justin in the chapter one is for the address. To the Emperor Titus, Alias, Adrianus, Antonius, Pius Augustus Caesar, and to his son, Verissimus, the philosopher, and to Lucius the philosopher, the natural son of Caesar, and to the adopted son of Pius, lover of learning, and to the sacred senate, with, the pe with who the people of the Romans, I, Justin, the son of Priscus and grandson of Bacchus, natives of Flavia Neapolis in Palestine, present this address and petition on behalf of those of all nations who are unjustly hated and wantonly abused, myself being one of them. Second chapter, Justice is Demanded. Reason directs those who are truly pious and philosophical to honor and love that which is true, declining to follow traditional opinions, and what this meant in terms of the author's notes is literally the opinion of the ancients. Again, so for only does traditional opinions, if they, if these be worthless, for not only does sound reason direct us to refuse the guidance of those who did or taught anything wrong, but it is incumbent on the on the lover of truth by all means, and if death be threatened, even before his own life, to choose to do and say what is right. Do you then since ye are called pious and philosophers, guardians of justice, and lovers of learning, give good heed and hearken to my address, and if ye are indeed such, it will be manifested. For we have come, not to flatter you by these writings, nor please you by our address, but to beg that you pass judgment after an accurate and searching investigation, not flattered by prejudice or by a desire of pleasing superstitious men, nor induced by the original impulses or evil rumors which have, which have long been prevalent, to give a decision which will prove to be against yourselves. For as for us, we reckon that no evil can be done to us unless we be convicted as evildoers and be proved to be wicked men. And you, you could kill, but you cannot hurt us. Chapter 3, Claim of Judicial Investigation. 
But lest anyone think that this is an unreasonable and uh, reckless utterance, we demand that the charges against the Christians be investigated, and that if these are substantiated, they be punished as for what they deserve. And, and this is in brackets, or rather, indeed, we ourselves will punish them. And, the, and on the author's notes, thoroughly regarded the clause in brackets is an interpolation. There is considerable variety of opinion as to the exact meaning of the words amongst those who regard them as genuine. Basically, what that means is that, uh, is that uh, because this is all being translated, now it's there's a some of the thoughts that the person was using uh, there's different varying degrees of thoughts that the person could uh, could imply in their own language that cannot be translated but if no one can convict us of anything true reason forbids you for the sake of wicked rumor to wrong blameless men and indeed rather yourselves who think to direct affairs not by judgment but by passion and every sober-minded person will declare this to be the only fair and equitable adjustment namely that the subjects render an unexceptional account of their own life and doctrine and that on the other hand the rulers should given their decision and obedience, not to violence and tyranny, but to piety and philosophy. For thus would both rulers and ruled reap benefit, for even one of the ancients somewhere said, unless both rulers and ruled philosophize, it is impossible to make states blessed. And this was a quote from Plato. It is our task, therefore, to afford to all an opportunity of inspecting our lives and teachings, lest in an account of those who are accustomed to be ignorant of our affairs, we should incur the penalty due to them for mental illness. And then under the author's notes, that is to say, if the Christians refused or neglected to make their real opinions and practices known, they would share the guilt of those whom they thus kept in the darkness. In other words, confession. And it is your business, when you hear us, to be found, as reason demands, good judges. For if, when ye have learned the truth, you, not, you do not what is just, you will be before God without excuse. Yeah, you don't want to take these guys to supper. <laughs> They're pretty blunt in their uh, in their philosophies of their faith. Chapter four: Christians are justly condemned for their mere name. Yeah, yeah, that's that was a normal thing back then. Okay, by the mere application of a name, nothing is decided, either good or evil, apart from the actions implied in the name, and indeed. So far, at least, as one may judge from the name we are accused of, we are a most excellent people. And under the author's notes, the author was saying, Justin avails himself here of the similarity in sound of the words Zipiarach, which is Christ, and Zipiarach, good, worthy, excellent, which was good, worthy, and excellent. Apparently, they were both uh, the words themselves were very, uh, very close in uh, in words. They play upon these words is kept up throughout this paragraph and cannot be always represented to the English readers. Okay, but as we do not think it just to bake. To be acquitted on account of the name, if we be convicted as evil doers, so on the other hand, if we be found to have committed no offense either in the matter of thus naming ourselves or of our conduct as citizens, it is your part very earnestly to guard against incurring just punishment. But a justly 
punishing those who are not convicted. For from a name neither praise nor punishment could reasonably spring. Unless something excellent or base in action can be proved. And those among yourselves who are accused you do not punish before they are convicted, but in our case you receive the name as proof against us. And this although so far as the name goes, you ought rather to punish our accusers. For we are accused of being Christians and to hate what is excellent. Christian is unjust. Again, if only of the accused deny the name and say that he is not a Christian, you acquit him, as having no evidence against him as a wrongdoer. But if anyone acknowledges that he is a Christian, you punish him on account of this acknowledgement. Justice requires that you inquire into the life both of him who confesses and of him who denies, that by his deeds it may be apparent what kind of man each is. You'll notice that was uh, one of the first letter Paul to the Corinthians, that uh, that Justin was taking this from. For as some who have been taught by the Master, Christ, not to deny him, give encouragement to others when they are put to the question. So in all probability do those who lead wicked lives give occasion to those who, without consideration, take upon them to accuse all the Christians of impiety and wickedness. And this is also not right. For a philosophy, too, some assume the name and the garb of those who do nothing worthy of their profession. And you are well aware that those of the ancients whose opinions and teachings are quite diverse are yet all called by the name, the one name of philosophers. And of these, some taught atheism. And the poets who have flourished among you raise a laugh out of the uncleanness of Jupiter with his own children. Uh, Jupiter was a that uh, was considered a, a pagan god that uh, had a human children. And those who now adopt such instructions are not restrained by you, but on the contrary, you bestow prizes and honors upon those who ethnically insult the gods. So that basically what they're saying there is that, you know, at the time in, in the Roman Empire, it, as long as you uh, were going to the temples and uh, you didn't bother uh, trying to, uh, you know, try to debate anybody with your faith, uh, you were left alone. But when you did, when you did say, you know, there's only one God, not gods and goddesses, then they would, uh, that's, that's, uh, that was the Roman Empire back then. Chapter 5. Christians charged with atheism. Yes, that's right, atheism. Why then should this be, in our case, who pledge ourselves to do no wickedness, nor to hold these atheistic opinions, you do not examine the charges made against us? By yielding to unreasoned passion and to the instigation of evil demons, you punish us without consideration or judgment. For the truth shall be spoken, since of old these evil demons affecting apparitions of themselves, both defiled women and corrupted boys, and show, showed such fearful sights to men that those who did not use their reason in judging of the actions that were done were struck with terror and being carried away by fear and not knowing that these were demons they called them gods and gave to each the name which each of these demons chose for himself and when Socrates endeavored by true reason and examination to bring these things to light and deliver men from the demons then the demons themselves, by means of men who rejoiced in iniquity, 
compassed his death as an atheist and a profane person on the charge that he was introducing new divinities. And in our case, they display a similar activity. For not only among the Greeks did reason, Logos prevailed to condemn these things to Socrates, but also among the barbarians where, where they were condemned by reason, or the word, the Logos, himself, who took shape and became man and was called Jesus Christ. And in obedience to him, we not only deny that they would they who did such things as these are gods, and the the writer talked under this that the word means in Greek a god, but the Christians use the word to signify an evil spirit. Justin uses the same word here for god and demon. The connection with Justin and other Christian writers supposed to exist between evil spirits and the gods of the heathens will be apparent from Justin's own statements. The word diabonach, devil, is not applied to these demons. There is but one devil, but many demons. So I'm just going to go through this again. He himself took shape and became man and was called Jesus Christ. And in obedience to him, who are not only denied that they who do such things as these are gods, but assert that they are wicked and impious demons whose actions will not bear comparison with those even of men desirous of virtue. And in chapter 6, charge of atheism is refuted. Hence we are called, a, are we called atheists? And we confess that we are atheists so far as gods of this sort are concerned, but not with respect to the most true God, the father of righteousness, and temperance, and other virtues, who is free from all impurity. But both him and the son who came forth from him and taught us these things, and the host of the other good angels who follow and are made like to him and the prophetic spirit we worship and adore knowing them in reason and truth and declaring without grudging to everyone who wishes to learn as we have been taught and the author goes to explain on this this is the literal and obvious translation of Justin's words but from chapter 13, 16, and 61, it is evident that he did not desire to inculcate the worship of angels. We are therefore driven to adopt another translation of this passage, even though it be somewhat harsh. Two such translations have been proposed. The first connecting us and the host of the other good angels as the common object of the verb Tagut, the second meaning these things with the host of, etc. And making those these two together the subject taught. In the first case, the translation would stand, taught these things to us and to the host, etc. In the second case, the translation would be taught us about these things and about the host of the other things of others who follow him via the good angels. So basically what that's just saying is that, uh, is that in the translation it sounds like if you were to translate it to English that uh, we are worshiping angels and no that's not the case. Uh, it's the angels who are in heaven and the uh, and the and us, us mortals would basically be uh, worshiping God. So, anyways, that is chapter six, and in the next chapters, I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about uh, the Christians must be tried by his own life. Uh, Christians confess their faith in God, and folly of idol worship, in which all these early Christians they were trying to explain that the Roman pagan gods were 
not really gods, they were demons uh, that basically tried to subvert the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when you, uh, when you, when I continue through this, there's about oh, 453 pages, and we just got through the first 12 pages on this uh, book. So this will be a little while before we get this done. Anyways, let's just finish this off by saying, if I was on the Holy Spirit, amen, I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless you.